YouTube! And I'm here joined by the rank one global duelist in the Macedon World Championship Qualifier. The first place duelist, the person who is technically the greatest master duelist in the world. Uh, I'm here joined by Tasku, and uh, I have a translator with me as well. So, uh, shout outs to Mahu here. Thank you for being here. Tasku, hi, hello, how are you? Hi, Genki Yes, he's fine. He's doing good. <laughs> So I have a, a whole list of questions here that I want to go through. How how was your general uh, sort of feelings on the whole uh, accomplishment that you that you've managed to achieve? Hi, え、代表になれたことは、えっと、嬉しいです。え、その遊戯王は昔からえ、好きで、え、17年間ぐらいえっと、プレイしてるのですごい、え、上してます。so he's very happy to uh, to have gotten number one, and he's been playing for 17 years. So this is really a big achievement for him. How old is How old is he? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-four. Uh, I guess, like, if he wants to, maybe just do a quick little share of, you know, who who are you? Um, you know, what do you do? How did you get into Yu-Gi-Oh? Kind of thing. Hi, ask this. <笑>遊戯王を始めた理由は遊戯王のアニメを見て始めました一番最初に作ったデッキはブラックマンシャンデッキですえ、His name is well Task. It is actually the English Task. And uh, he so back in his childhood he, he watched uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Duel, Ma Duel Masters, so the very first series, and started playing because of that. And his very first deck was Black Magician. Oh wait, I'm sorry. All right, um, that's so Japanese. Darn they changed it to Dark Magician, right? Yeah. <laughs> Same, dude. That's literally my favorite starter between that and Blue Eyes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so I suppose my uh, first question going into uh, the Worlds grind is, why did he decide to do this in the first place? Was it always his goal to go to Worlds, or does he just kind of wanted to see how it went? He wants to be number one uh, of the world, apparently. Um, he was also, so he couldn't get into um, the YCS um, in, in Tokyo which took place uh, uh, on Sunday, the same weekend. So instead, he thought he would just, you know, just um, grind for three days straight and try to get number one that way. Oh, that's uh, interesting. He just, he actually didn't really care that much about Macedo per se. Is his is his focus TCG? Pretty much, uh, as you said. So uh, he was trying to get number one through Master Duel or OCG in this case. Um, and well, as... Yeah, the, the OCG part didn't w quite work out, but instead he got uh, the rank one in, in Master Duel. So from now on, he'll he'll try to yeah win the Worlds from there. What was his strategy for this outside of like the gameplay? What was his plan for sleep, for food and for rest? Did he plan that out in advance? Did he kind of just feel it out? What was his uh, main strat there? So, so, he... <laughs> はい、なんか、なんかその眠くならないような飲み物があるんですけど、それを飲んでちょっと寝ないようにしました。アパレントリーヒプペアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアアア
Um, oh crap, I kind of lost it here, I'm sorry. Um, That's okay, you can ask sorry. him again, but I was going to segue oh. into the uh, yeah. gameplay stuff anyway, if he wanted to maybe explain his build a little bit more. I think I have the correct ones on screen. Um, so he played Sprite and Tier Lament. Um, does he maybe want to elaborate a little bit more on why he played like Branded, for example, in the Tier Lament deck, and why he chose Sprite as his second deck, and how his successes were between them, etc.? ラクインティアラメンツについてはこのラクイン融合の要素がえっとえっとアルバスのその エクソシステムマニフィカとかに対してその方向相手の展開を返すことができないんですけど、ダクニュー語が入ってるとそれ一枚でそのエクソシステムの盤面を返すことができるので、そこがいいなって思いました。あとは名称アントラクターとか、は
So he, he, whenever he gets a max seed, he, he just feels like he, you know, no matter what he does, he just can't win now. It's basically an auto win for the opponent. So he would much, yeah, he would much rather not have Maxi in the game. Just as a side point, does he know that Maxi is banned in TCG uh, compared to OCG? なんかそういう話は聞いてて、なんか海外のデッキとか見ると増殖する字入ってないんで禁止なんだなみたいな感じで思ってて。そう、he so, yeah, was looking at um TCG decks and immediately noticed that there was no maxi. <laughs> so that, that that's how we found out that it was uh, banned uh, in the West. So that's why he if like he really wants to try playing in the TCG instead because it looks so much better without. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to ask as well. Uh, what did he do about his like player name and stuff? I know a lot of people like hid their thing. They called themselves player. They changed their mate. Did he care about that? Did he did he try and track people? And also, did he watch any streams? Because I know like Josh was streaming to like thousands of people. Maybe if he was on Twitch, did he like check out to see if anyone was was high rated or anything like that? He did actually change his name, um, trying to hide his identity. So as to, for example, if he's using the Tierlement deck, so that his opponent wouldn't know to you know not activate uh, uh, Kelbeck and Nagido to mill, is something that you obviously wouldn't do in a mirror match. And uh, as far as live streams, he actually avoided uh, watching or doing anything besides playing. He was literally just sitting there all alone in his room and wanted to concentrate on playing. So he peaked like really high. He has like 72,000 points. Was there any point where he thought like, okay, I should stop and hold this rating? Did he have any bad losing streaks? And then he regretted not sitting on his points. Was it basically was there ever a point uh, a, a point through the weekend where he thought, okay, I should stop because I have a good number of points, or was his plan to always just play, play, play? All right, holy fucking shit! This is base as fuck, but so <laughs> he was at around seven seventy two. Where is it? I think seventy two thousand or so points. And he thought like, all right, so I he he really wanted to make the eighty thousand or even climb to eighty six thousand. But that's exactly where he kept losing. He, he actually went on a losing streak. So he decided to call it a day. And believe it or not, eight hours before the event would end. Oh, he he, he stopped eight him. hours before? Yes. <laughs> wow. What was his peak? What was his highest? Uh, so his high score was about 76,000. He's at... 78, 72, 73 around, yeah. <laughs> It'd be interesting to get his perspective on this, but why is he, and maybe just Japan in general, why are they so far ahead of the West? Like, it's it's a big gap, like, significant gap. Why does he think that is? You mean gap, gap in skill or gap in product? Well, at least in terms of, like, I mean, skills, we could talk about that all day, but I'm just, yeah... Fact of the matter is the points, right? That's we can just look at the evidence, and oh, that's the points and the numbers. So I suppose this, this the gap in the DP is what we'll talk about for now. I suppose. So in his opinion, it might be because um, in Japan, um, this is also like uh, from from his own experience, like uh, anecdotally, he can he can also confirm that that there probably in Japan there are just much more people who are who are you know um, try harding, I suppose, so like. Uh, focusing on on being super competitive, and that might just be the reason why um, the points are so much higher in Japan compared to the rest of the world. So it's not so it's just a pure like raw number thing. It's not like Japanese players are just better than us, right? Yeah, sure. There there are some very skilled players in uh, or duelists in Japan, but he thinks it's mostly due to how um, most of the Japanese players are really passionate about Yu-Gi-Oh! and um, they kind of all want to be, well, the very best like no one ever was. And <laughs> so, in his words, it's basically more a dedication thing rather than, you know, a pure skill thing. All right, so we just need to uh, get serious, huh? <laughs>
<笑>いやそんなことはないと思うんですけど海外の方は独自のプレーがあると思うんでただ本当に日本人が<笑>遊戯王をやりすぎてるっていうのは思います。Interestingly, he kind of thinks quite the opposite. It's,、uh, to him, it's more like、uh, you guys are already good. The thing is just Japanese and just overdoing it. Oh, wow. That's actually really interesting. Okay. Okay, so I have like two more questions, I think.、Um, I wanted to ask what does he think of this system for qualifying? If he has any ideas for alternative methods to qualify to worlds, or does he think this is fine? What would he change? Or does he just like this and it's fine? Instead of. You know, grinding for multiple days、um, uh, at once, he would propose a system where we would do that、uh, multiple times throughout the year. And those people who have accumulated or rather ranked highly、uh, among, those, um, among those tournaments would get admitted to the World Championship instead, is what he would have pre- preferred. So, kind of like the Duelist Cup, but. Taking the total from all of them or something? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So just just repeat the same thing、uh, multiple times, but you know, over the whole year and then tally all the results. Has he already picked his 3v3 team? He didn't think he would become uh, um, the. What, what's it called in, 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 in English? The, the, the area's representative? Yeah, yeah. The, the champion, the Jap- Japanese champion, whatever. Um, he really didn't think he would, he would get that far, so he hasn't thought about、uh, picking anyone so far. So, right now, he's just, he's just waiting for the official、um, confirmation, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, basically. <laughs> Can I be on his team? You know, Falso san, from the nuance I'm getting, he would probably, although he didn't say this directly, he would probably love to pick you, but unfortunately,、um, I don't think you're、um, eligible due to not residing in Japan.、So. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, it's, it's only because I'm not、uh, Japanese, that's why. Otherwise, I'd definitely be on his team. That's really kind of him. Thank you. Ah, yeah, you didn't say. So obviously, it's. Very difficult for him to say because he won and he's technically the best. So clearly, everything he did was the right choice. But if he did everything all over again, what does he think he would have done differently? Either in terms of different cards he would have played or his sleep schedule. What would he have done differently if he was to do everything all over again, hypothetically? The, the first thing he mentioned was、um, getting enough sleep. Yeah, you hear that, boys and girls? Just. Get enough sleep basically <laughs> is the one thing he would definitely change、um, because it he feels like it that actually cost him a few points in the end、uh, where he would you know just was too exhausted or just just lost for free and、mm. stuff like that. I apologize for one misunderstanding earlier.、Um, he's much more of a giga chat than you all thought he would be.、Um, he actually did take part in the YCS on that Sunday. And what he said was if he did, <laughs> but he, he couldn't top at the YCS. But if he just didn't go there and instead grinded for another day,、um, he said that he would have preferred to do that instead. So, yes, he actually went to that YCS, played the entire day there until he went home and grinded a little bit more in Master Duel. Oh, okay. So, like,、uh... You know, things to fix for next time is if you're going to do a 72 hour grind, you know, don't attend the YCS. <laughs> is、uh, something he would have done differently. The YCS cost him way too much time, so.、Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, no <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs>、uh, that's amazing, honestly. Like, he clearly like, really loves the game. And、uh, just on a fun sort of send off point, I wanted to ask、uh, you know, he, he mentioned he's been playing for like 15 years.、Um, I'm just curious, like, what is his personal. Uh, favorite, most like absolute beloved、uh, archetype in Yu Gi Oh! What is his favorite deck? Yeah, yeah, it was Punk. And the reason for that is that,、uh, so the, as you may know, Punk is based on you know, traditional Japanese art. And、uh, he really likes that aspect about、uh, the archetype. That's really cool.、Um, my favorite deck is Burning Abyss. Does he have any thoughts on that? He actually、um, knows the English name for. Oh, right. Uh, it has a different name in Japanese, which was obviously to Japanese, so they had to change it.、Um, but yeah, he knows Burning Abyss.、Um, he said that he liked it.、Um, and especially Beatrice、um, has a pretty strong effect. So it's, it's、uh, really easy to use card. And、uh, 
Uh, I think this is his uh, official endorsement for your favorite deck, Papa. <laughs> okay, awesome. That's great. Or should I um, tell him that his, your name is based on, on Fafa? People yeah, I friends. guess you could uh, mention that. Uh, is it the same in Japanese? Uh, I'm not sure. Slightly different. Ah, no. Fafa reru. Ah, no. Hi. Hi. Fafa reru no. Eigo me desu yo. Yeah, um, he he um, uh, he was <laughs> as, you, as you could hear from his uh, reaction, he was posit positively surprised, and uh, he he lost a couple of games because his opponent actually used Fafa against him. <laughs> what? So kind of, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> apparently, what deck was he, he was, playing? <laughs> he was playing Monarchs. Oh, he's playing uh, Monarchs. Was, what? <laughs> We were playing monarchs, and because of uh, because burning the burning abyss would just you know just get rid of his his uh, his tribute fodder, he couldn't play his deck, so that's how he lost. <laughs> oh, that's like old school. Okay, okay, yeah, that was a deck. Okay, sure. Um, what do we say? I guess uh, <laughs> you know, I know it's getting late over there. I'm not sure if um, you know. Does he want to ask me anything? I have obviously a lot of knowledge on the Western side of Yu-Gi-Oh and TCG and in Master Do. Is there anything he's curious about, or anything that um, I suppose maybe the Japanese community like think about in terms of our side of the game? そう、あの、he would like to know what kind of decks are popular in the West specifically in Master Duel. Uh in Master Duel, um well, from what I know, um the third place European played only tier limit, nothing else, just tier limit. What he did was he changed up some of his uh, tech cards depending on what the opponent was playing. Um, so Super Poly was very good against Exosister, for example. So he would change based on the opponent, but he only played Tier Limit. And I know Josh played, I feel like mostly Sprite, but a, a, quite a lot of Tier as well. Wait, wait, but the, the, those were only like the top decks. How about like popular decks, like te decks that are, were most used in the West? You like know just in that? like outside of the event, like just popular, like just as a general thing. Uh, in in Master Duel, yes. Oof. Uh, what do you think, chat? Let's see. Um, yeah, branded is very popular over here. A lot of goatee recently, I guess, is quite popular. It's uh, a lot of Sword Soul as well is really popular. Heroes, Heroes is pretty uh, very popular as well. That's uh yeah, just at, in terms of like outside of the competitive sphere, there's um a lot of like heroes, um, Lord Soul, branded, uh, just kind of like a lot of anime based decks as well. Some Salomon Great as well, I suppose. I think he understands everything I'm saying, right? Mostly. Um, we'll see, but I've got no idea what the heck Goatee would be in Japanese because it, it is. Oh, yeah, it's a Japanese. TCG exclusive, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, crap. I just realized. ゴーティーズアクシンマスジオでハブジャンプソースそうですねオシジはまだゴーティーズ出てなくてちょっとまだプレイできない状態ですねオシジのはゴーティーズがいないんでゴーティーゴーティーズゴーティーズウィッビー
えー、もうあったらもうたくさんお話ししましょう。あ<笑>あ、oh, really? like,、uh, so, yeah, if, if,、uh, if you were to meet, then he would love to talk to you a lot. But... That's fantastic. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to head off now and、uh, leave the Discord. Appreciate it. And、uh, I'll see you.、Uh... Yeah, goodbye, guys. Thank you. Big shout out to Mahu as well for being our translator. I assume this was not an easy thing for you to do,、uh, but you did amazingly. So thank you so much, dude. You were amazing. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. It was fun. It was fun. Thank you very much. All right. Good night. Take care. All right, YouTube. If you enjoyed that, then、uh, comment, like, subscribe. Leave a description down below with Tusk's YouTube、uh, that you could watch him.、Uh, he streams as well. You can watch his live. He's clearly an incredibly passionate punk duelist.、Uh, so make sure you click down below, subscribe to him, and maybe you can check him out live. Thank you for watching, and until next time, adios.